All right, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, amen. Well, as the, the lyrics to the little song go, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas around here. The Christmas season has begun. It's like we just put Thanksgiving away <laughs> yesterday, and um, it's Christmas already, but here we go, and I, I love this time of year. Love all the festivities, all the things that are happening, and uh, look forward to sharing a lot of those with you, our church family, over the next few weeks. Um, this is going to be uh, a, a busy time. Uh, when is it not busy? I know, but particularly a lot of great opportunities. And I want to give you an update uh, on our Operation Christmas Child. You, Heartland, filled 348 boxes that were, yeah, come on, give it up. That is awesome and incredible that were shipped out uh, uh, just a couple of days ago that will go all over the world. And uh, I believe and trust that many of you will hopefully receive some acknowledgement maybe of the child that received the box that you sent and uh, what it meant to them. But we know this is a great outreach. It's a great opportunity to impact young people all over the world. We had uh, waited to the, almost the last minute uh, to get our boxes filled. And we went over to the store the other night and uh, Sabrina was like, uh, did you get the stuff for the boxes? I'm like, no, I thought you got the stuff for the boxes. She's like, no, we got to go do it. It's nine o'clock at night. So where are you going to go? There's not that many stores open, right? And um, uh, we, we I, I had to remind her, babe, it's a box. It's You can't fill up the buggy. You can't get what's in the buggy in the box so you're going to have to pick and choose what do we she's like well we'll just do more boxes and um, so we ended up getting to do a couple boxes but I'm looking forward and um, to, to some young person one boy and one girl for sure we kept it even in our house um, will receive those boxes and be blessed this Christmas likely the only thing they will receive so thank you heartland for getting involved in that i believe that touches the heart of god anytime we reach out to the kids uh around the world and and bless them amen so um that said this week we we launch into uh december it's december 1st can you believe it it seems like we just did january and uh here we go but this wednesday night i want to invite every one of you first wednesday of the month of december We'll gather right here on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and have a time of prayer and encouraging uh, one another, but looking forward. Age and uh, have a good time. There are ladies' events going, there are men's events going, there's outreach events going. So grab the, the, the little upcoming sheet, uh, event sheet, and look at it. Get involved. Do something uh, with somebody. Amen? Well, I want to get into the message this morning. We are obviously launching into our Christmas um, series. And um, this year, we're, we're just kind of focusing on uh, the fact that this is a journey. We, we read in the scripture uh, a lot of uh, the story of uh, uh, how Joseph and Mary were on their way to Bethlehem. And, you know, we, we got a lot of this down in our head, but... I think about it often. It, it was a journey, no doubt. They, they, there was a lot happening and a lot of things for them to consider. So our focus this year, and uh, by the way, the guys did an awesome job uh, to Deborah who did the, uh, the centerpiece there, uh, how beautiful and, and amazing it is. And so thank you to those people who've been involved in that. But we are going to focus on the star because there was a star that was shining. We read it in the Word. And uh, there, there's, you know, this is the beginning today is the Sunday, first Sunday of December. And it is the beginning of what is known as, as Advent season. And, um, you know, I know that some uh, uh, denominations uh, really flow with this and put a lot of into it. And if you're familiar with it, know that each week a different candle is lit for different uh mean it has different meanings and i want to uh look at that today and um continue because today being the first sunday of advent it, the focus is on the one word and that is the word of hope hope and uh, you know as the as the worship set was uh being sung and uh, we were entering into worship i was thinking how 
uh, it so impacted me when Deborah sang the lyrics to that one song and I wasn't uh, prepared for that. I had not really looked at the lyrics of the song when she said, up from the ashes, hope will arise. I thought, how, how in perfect uh, a, a, series, uh, a, a set of lyrics for uh, this particular sermon. You know, this will be my second time. The first service this morning that happened around 8 o'clock, most of you weren't here. It was a service of one. And um, I had an amazing opportunity to meet a young man who walked into this building this morning who was desperately seeking help, hope for a tragic situation that he had just uh, walked through, the loss of a seven-year-old daughter and the pain that, that, that he felt in his heart trying to get back to his family. And um, as he began to, he just was literally on his knees in the office there weeping and crying. And, you know, I'm like, okay, Father, what is it that you want us to do? Uh, you know, and I don't want to sound skeptical at all, but, uh, you, you know, you, you meet a lot of people that come and go, and, and you're like, okay, Lord, is this... Is this real or am I being played? Can I just be honest? Straight up. So immediately the Holy Spirit just touched my heart and said, love on this guy. He came because somebody else pointed him here. Okay, it wasn't a drive-by. He was at Whataburger. But couldn't hold back the tears when the lady said to him, there's a church over there, you need to go to that church. I'm like, awesome. So here we are, God, what do we do with this? And then I, it, he said, what, the time that you've invested, I want you to share it with him right now. So he got the full meal deal. He, he got the whole message shared with him. And I watched as his spirit was encouraged and as he began to uh, uh, just pray out to God for the situations in his life. But, you know, hope is something that we all need. Hope is something that, honestly, we, we can't live without. And uh, it is because of the message of the gospel that brings us hope. And I want to share just um, for a few minutes here because our hope is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As Christians, we know that our hope is in Him. But our hope is also in knowing that there is a returning that is going to take place. Jesus is coming back to this earth to take us home to glory and that is the hope of glory that is the hope that we all uh, are inspired by and that our purpose in being coming Christians is to share that hope with others but I want to take a quick look at, at just the stories that we read in the Bible focusing in Luke chapter 1 you can grab your Bibles and, and open them up and uh, we're going to read quite a few different scriptures today because I think the word is the best way for us to get the message across. But uh, when I think about the Christmas season, of course, we go immediately to the manger, to the, to the place, the birth of Christ. And um, I believe that is A-OK. -okay. That, is, that is fine that we start right there because he is and will be as an infant, one that we can always acknowledge that was hope personified. He was the hope that was given to this world. You know, and I think about babies particularly, and, and thinking of Jesus, Mary had to be most excited at the birth of Jesus. Can you imagine? I mean, just let's go back and think about this mother who had just given birth to this baby. What did she see? What was the potential? Now, when we had our kids, we saw the potential immediately. I mean, they're one day old, and we see them as the president. We see them as a surgeon. We see them as some super athlete. We wonder, what is this child going to be? Don't you think Mary had some of those same thoughts? What will this child be? You know, a great doctor, a great lawyer, uh, like I say, um, maybe just a great worker in some company somewhere. You know, but, but as... Adults, as people, as uh, proud parents, we see our kid as number one, right? He's going to be, she's going to be the best of the best and, and carry it all. 
Well, d- Mary had to, 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 to know that this birth that she was uh, uh, about to, to give this child was for a special purpose and a special reason. I want to start with Luke chapter 1, as I said, and we're going to look at verses 31 and 33, and I'm reading from the NIV version. You will be with child. Now, this is a prophecy uh, that is being fulfilled. You will be with a child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. This is the prophecy uh, that is being echoed from Isaiah. Six, seven hundred years later, it is being repeated. It reads in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 this way. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of His government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over His kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Isaiah Roughly 700 years prior to Jesus being born. The story we read in chapter 1 of Luke. Here is Mary reliving what has been said, get this, six to 700 years prior. She is delivering the prophecy. Not only that, but Joseph... Mary's husband had received a promise. So imagine, only God could have ordained such. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20 and 21, it reads, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Lord, I pray that your word today will not just be words we hear, but will dwell in us and change us, make us to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. So the word of God makes it very, very clear to Joseph and Mary that this baby is the one, would be the one for whom the world would be watching and hoping for. A savior, a deliverer, a king. Now, the situation, as it were, by today's standards, would make most of us very uncomfortable. Um, Husband, your wife is pregnant, and it's not your child. Most of us would be a bit uncomfortable with that. But isn't it amazing how God had given not just Mary the word for the future, but had also spoken to Joseph and given him the word of the future. That this baby that's being born would be established and would be the eternal future for all mankind. A future of justice and righteousness. Not all religions are looking to Jesus for their salvation and for their well-being, their healing as individuals, their, their salvation and their future, their in Christ. But Christianity is a religion of hope. A religion that is expressive in a hope of a future. As I shared this morning with this young man, my hope is not in this life. My hope is in the eternal life. We are not living for this world. We are living for our future world. Towards the future. 
Our hope is in Him. Our faith is a future focused faith. It is a religion of what is to come. I am excited this morning because when I think about the goodness of God, it is with great thanksgiving for the things that are done here. But it's out of the ashes of a broken life that he has made into a new life that I am now focused on and living for. That we as Christians, it's not our past that matters. It's our future. It's the hope of a future and a hope of eternal peace. A hope of eternal uh, uh, relationship with God the Father. I am convinced that when we keep our primary focus on the world to come, the things that are happening in this world will have less impact on us. When our hope and our focus is on Him and a future in Him, then the, the situations that I'm walking through here will have less impact on my life. But it requires hope because what the enemy does is he tries to steal your hope. He tries to take your hope. I recognize, and I think all of you will agree, hope is not automatic. It is not like just guaranteed. Sometimes hope is difficult to find. Sometimes hope seems to escape us. It seems like if of anything, there's not, there is no hope because the circumstances around us have closed in on our lives and it, it, our, our, our focus has shifted from the heavenlies to what's going on in my life. How do we sustain hope then? How do we get this hope that, that can guide us through the difficult situations of life, that can take us through the hardest of times the way we see it, and stay focused on that eternal life. How do you keep from being overwhelmed? How can we possibly make it through the diagnosis that I received? How can I possibly get through the fact that I've lost my job, I've lost my, my finances, I've lost everything that I am familiar with? How do you get through those times? How do we maintain hope when despair seems to be all around? When you can't see the way out? When I was sharing some of this with this gentleman this morning, I thought, wow, thank you, Father. You knew he was going to come by here this morning. And if not one other person catches any of this today, it was worth every second that I invested so I could encourage him in his hope for his future as he goes to bury his seven-year-old daughter. You see, we, we've all faced some desperate situations in our life. We've all been in situations where there seemed to be little or no hope. Whether it's a personal situation with a job, as I said, or maybe a, a, a diagnosis of, of a health issue. Maybe it's the financial thing that can seem to get so many people down. I no longer can accomplish what I used to accomplish because I don't have the finances to do it. All hope can seem gone. And the thing about it this morning in this room, maybe watching via live stream, there likely is a few people that have been and are in situations that it's hard for them to find hope today. But can I tell you, I believe that being this day 
a day of talking about hope, the beginning, the launching of this Christmas season of Advent. It's not an accident that we're talking about hope today. If that's what you are struggling with, you can't find hope. We are going to find hope today. And we find it in our blessed Savior. We find it in the Word of God. We find it when we're seeking Him. How do we maintain? We put our hope in God. It's really very simple. Oh, but that's so hard for me to do. No, you put your hope in God. Uh, most of us could uh, uh, attest to the fact we've had our hope in other things and that didn't work out so good. So if it didn't work out the first time, it's probably not going to work out the second time. But when you put your hope in God, your trust in Him, you can expect a big turnaround. See, our, our first inclination as people, as human beings, when hope seems to escape us, the first thing we do is turn to someone else that we know to get their thoughts on the situation. You know, I wonder how much money is spent on seeking financial advice when everything that you need to know is right in the scripture about how to be prosperous. I wonder how much money is spent, how many hours are invested in listening to Oprah or <laughs> Dr. Phil on how to get through your emotional problems. And after you've invested all that time, Likely your problems are still right there in front of you. Because we'll rack our brains to try to figure out a way to, to get answers to our problems by talking to one another. Last week we talked about the horizontal relationship and the vertical relationship a little bit. And all that we invest here can be good. It can be positive. It can bring some help. But the truth is, it can also take you down a road that God did not intend for you to go. You could get some help from somebody who means well, but God didn't tell you to go talk to that person, and all of a sudden they're giving you a direction that's going to take you on a detour. It's not what God had for you. It's not the direction. Now, I don't know that there's anything particular wrong with Dr. Phil's uh, uh, encouragement and, and his uh, uh, words of help, but he ain't my helper. I don't go to him with my needs. But the truth is, that's typically what we do. We turn to one another first before we turn to God. And if we would just turn to him, and get clarity from him, the direction that he wants to go, because remember, our hope should be in whom? In him. So if our hope is in him, and he gives us direction, I do believe he allows us to do life together, to encourage one another, and maybe to go, hey, did you think of this? But you know what? When you've gotten your answer from God, it really doesn't matter what anybody else says. I mean, truthfully, Thank you for your opinion, but that is not what God said. Because so many times we'll ask one another, our, what do you think? What, 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 what should I do? What shouldn't I do? What did you do in a situation like this? And what happened in my life may have no relevance to yours. And my intent is to bring you some sort of wisdom, some sort of encouragement, but it's not what God wanted to do in your life. So my encouragement to you is to put your hope in Him. Amen. Hear from Him. When you've heard from Him, use the wisdom and the counsel of those around you to help move you in that direction. His direction. Don't get sidetracked with following somebody else. Our hope is to be in Him first. In Psalm 33, there is a great passage that helps us to gain a better understanding and to be encouraged in this hope. It starts in verses 16 and runs through 22. 
No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our hope, he is our help, and he is our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Amen. Amen. Now, I would assume, and it's not clear which of the psalmists wrote that, but most likely it was David. David, being a king, understands with all of the great warriors that he had around him, with all the great horses and all the, the, the armor and the, the, the battle-ready soldiers that would have been around him. I think it's amazing that he would say that no king is saved by the size of his army. In other words, no matter what we accumulate in this life, that in of itself is not going to make our future. That is what we accumulate right here is... is as massive as your wealth may or may not be, as many automobiles as you may or may not have, all the things that we accumulate here on earth, breaking it down in today's vernacular, would say that none of that is where you get your strength. It may feed your ego, but it won't bring you strength. Might make you broke, but... <laughs> It won't feed what should be alive in us, the hope. We wait and hope for the Lord. For He is our help and our shield. When I read those scriptures, it is very clear to me that when we place our hope in God, it pleases Him. He's pleased that our hope would be in Him. Because in verse 18 He says, His eyes are on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in His unfailing love to deliver them. Man, if He's watching like that, and He's paying attention to how we view Him and how we esteem Him. We would use the word fear in, in a way that, that would uh, uh, bring a, um, almost a doubt or a, 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 an unappreciative word. But this fear is a fear of I trust you because I know you can and you will do on my behalf what I could never accomplish in and of myself. So I, I fear me doing it and messing it up so much so that my trust and my hope is in you. And that's where we all should be. If He is our help and He is our shield and that's what the Word says, then we need to put that to work. Why? If He is my help and He is my shield, why wouldn't I be in relationship with Him so that I get the benefit of that very thing. I, I want to make sure that it's clear. What I'm not saying is I'm not saying you shouldn't go to the doctor if you're sick. I'm not saying that you couldn't or shouldn't reach out to a bank if you need financial help. So I'm not saying those things are bad. What I'm saying is we can't put our hope in those people. Because with all of the, 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 the knowledge that they may have concerning the need that you have, they can't fix it. Because I know what it's like to go to a banker and sit down and say, I need this much money to, uh, to put this deal together. And them say, there's the money. And I promptly figured out how to lose all that money. 
you know what I'm saying? So my hope can't be in them because sometimes the supply is there that we think we need. But if our hope is not in Him, we'll mess up whatever we get. So we don't put our hope in the things of this life, but our hope is in Him. He is our shield. Our trust is in Him because He covers us and directs our paths, the Word says, when we've invested that hope and that trust in Him. You know, and I recognize hope and faith are very similar. The way we, we use the word, sometimes we will interchange them, hope and faith. And it can be a little bit confusing. But can I tell you, when it comes to hope, the point I want to make today that we all walk away from here and that when we are given opportunity to share with somebody who's looking for hope, that we share with them hope is not what is around you. Your hope must rest in Him. And when your hope is in Him, you can get through the difficult times in life. You'll get through the, the, the times where it seems like all hell has come against your life. You'll get through the doctor's report that, that said uh, you've got cancer. You'll get through the phone call that says your child is gone when your hope is in Him. But without your hope in Him, those situations will be overwhelming. Those situations and those things are the things that the enemy will use to destroy you. So, where's your hope? Is it in Christ Jesus or is it in our abilities? As I said a moment ago, as wise as we can be on this earth, we are not even close to the wisdom that God the Father can bring to us when our hope is in Him, when we are believing in Him. So here's the question. When you're in a situation, let's call it just your hopes running low, do you spend more time on your own trying to figure out the problem? as I said, collecting opinions of others. And immediately we'd all go, oh no, I pray, oh I pray, I call upon God. And I believe, well you might. But it's more than sharing your wish list to get you out of the issues that you're going through. Are you listening to what he's saying? Because when your trust is in Him and He says, go this way, and everybody else is saying, go that way, you'll go against the grain. Come on. You'll go against what popular opinion might be to follow Him sometimes. I'd say most of the time. Because popular opinion doesn't generally support um, give everything you have, commit your life to Christ, and follow Him. That's not the popular opinion of the day. It's quite the contrary. You're free to be who you want to be. Express yourself the way you want to express yourself. No one should tell you this. No one should tell you that. You can't. Nobody should control your life. The opposite message of putting your hope in Christ. But when you're in this place of hope running low, where do you invest your time? Calling on one another? Spending all of your finances to get answers? My question is, when does prayer enter into your situational needs? When do you begin to call on the one you trust? Because I would say that without prayer in your life without being able to have that communication with our Lord and Savior, chances are you're going to follow what is most pleasing to you when it might require some sacrifice on your part. So many times 
We hear it said and have said it ourselves. Well, I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this situation. You got to help me. The truth is, I already know what he's going to say. <laughs> I already have a good idea of what the scripture says about the situation I'm in. And that's not the answer I'm looking for. I was looking for an easier way out. But let me tell you, when your trust is in Him, and when you are in your uh, private place, your, your, your secret place, if you will, when you're calling on God, and you're desperate for an answer, and you need to know, God, is this you? Am I, am I doing what you are calling me to do? Are you really telling me to go this way when it would be so much easier to go that way? Can I tell you, if your hope is in Him, you won't fret over the answer He gives you that's different from what the flesh would like you to do. You'll be able to accept that. But without communicating with Him, you won't get there. If we didn't talk together as husband and wife, we could live in the same house and function, but it would be in dysfunction. <laughs> Because when we live on this earthly realm, husband and wife or friendships, we can be together and not be on the same page. But listen, when my hope and earthly hope and trust is in my wife and we're having a conversation and she gives me her two cents and it's usually worth about 222 cents. good it's good yeah buddy when, when when I sometimes even don't want that opinion and it comes out and it's the answer I'm really looking for it is the right direction like, ah praise God all I'm trying to say is that we can think we have a relationship and we can spend time together. When I talk about praying, I, we've said it so many times, I'm not talking about those rock, rocket prayers. You know, um, you know, those little things that we'll say. Nothing wrong most of the time with those. What I'm talking about is that communication time. If my hope is in Him, then I want to spend time with Him. I want to, I want to hear what the Father has to say. I love my wife. I invest in her. She invests in me. I want to know her opinion. Sometimes she wants to know mine. And, um, you know, most of the time. Well. But we invest in one another. Because why? We love one another. That's what our relationship with Christ is supposed to be. And then when we're doing that very thing, and we get, see, I, I, on, an, on an earthly level, y'all stay with me, I have hope, I have trust, I have a level of faith in my wife. And I'm not saying it's less than I'm talking about a different kind of faith, okay? We got faith that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, but we have confidence would be another word in one another. My confidence is in knowing that Jesus gave his life for me. But my hope in Him is not that I just have a good life here. The Bible says that our hope is in our eternal life. In the forever. That's where my hope is. And it's not a wish. Big difference. It's not a wish. Make a wish and it might come true. Because I think it's amazing if you go back at the beginning of all of this story of the birth of Christ and, and the, the, uh, this Advent time and we, we, taught, we hear uh, the, the, the song, We Three Kings of Orient Are. I don't even remember all the lyrics to that. None of it is right or accurate. Uh, I, mean, I don't mean to ruin your parade if you love that song, but according to the word, that is not the way that went down. That actually there was a whole bunch of those people not just three, but three, but a whole bunch of 
uh, of those people were going. And, and honestly, they were, the Magi, as we call them, were, Magi is short for magical or magician. They were considered magicians or even sorcerers, if you will, of, of, uh, of bringing uh, good things about. And I think it's amazing how God used even men that uh, by our standard today, different than, but by our standard today, we, we as Christians would have probably gone, no, you can't use those people. They wouldn't be qualified because they don't even believe like I believe or they don't even see it the way I see it. Yet God used them. That's for us, church. We got to be really careful about who we say God can and can't use and when he will or won't use them and how he uses them, doesn't use them. And it's like I went to seminary and I graduated with honor, so why don't I have the biggest church in the... That's not true, y'all. Not, not about me, but... Um, y'all know what I'm saying? It's like we, we, we create this thing around us that somehow we've arrived and we, we got all the answers because we've done this and we've done that. Because our hope gets planted in, in the here and now, and it's not really in Christ Jesus. It's not in what God has, has planned for our life. Back to the notes. When, I, when you're running low on hope, what do you do? When does prayer enter into the picture? I can't say that in this life as you saints of God who have been running this race for a uh, years or decades would be in agreement. We cannot say that your hope in Christ means that everything is going to be smooth sailing for the rest of your life. That everything is going to be hunky-dory. That there are no problems. Just put your hope in Him and easy street, here we come. I have found it to be quite the contrary. That when my true hope and my trust and my faith is in Him, that situations that come, circumstances that happen, when I step back and look at them, have always moved me towards Him if I keep my focus on Him. Sometimes it takes years, if not decades, before you realize that's what's happened. Sometimes you will invest your whole life in the here and now and not see how all of those circumstances have been used for His glory, for His honor, and for even your good until you've, like I said, invested your whole life. But if your hope is in Him and life eternal, then what happens here has less importance on your life, less impact to the degree that it is not is what's guiding you. This life, what's happening here, is not what uh, should be steering our boat, if you will, our ship. Our trust should be in Him. Hope in God Himself. Isaiah said that we will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. In Lamentations, it says the Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him, to the one who seeks Him. In Psalms 147 and 11, it says, The Lord delights in those who fear Him, who put their hope in His unfailing love. It doesn't mean that God's goodness and His wisdom are always immediately evident in your life. See, the the enemy will take the very scriptures you're reading and try to point out to you it didn't happen instantly. Because, again, my hope is not in what's going on here. My hope is in Christ eternal. So I caution you, when, when you are seeking God, when you feel like your, your hope is invested in, in, in heaven and your eternal home, don't let things that don't work out here the way you, in your mind, prescribe them to be deter you from keeping your hope in Him. Don't allow those things 
to be a distraction and go, well, it didn't happen as quickly as I thought it should happen. So there must not be anything to that whole deal. As I said many, many times, you will walk. You sometimes may feel like you are walking alone. You may feel like there is no one else that understands what you're going through. It may seem that no one cares about your situation, the things that are happening in your life right now. But can I tell you, when your hope is in Him, you will get through the situation that you are currently in or that might come your way. God will use them for your benefit and His glory. It's real easy to say, let's put our hope in Him. To put your hope in God. Ah, oh, yeah, we're going to all do it today. But it's another, it's another thing to actually do it. It's another thing that when we are being pressured by circumstances that we truly are invested in our hope in, a, in an eternal home. Romans chapter 15 and verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit working in you. The Holy Spirit consuming you. It is that power that will overflow you with hope. What do you do when hope seems gone? I would encourage you to Google God's promises. 3,573, so you don't have to do it right now. 3,573 promises in the Bible. And we want to put our hope in one another. Our hope must be in Him. There are your answers. 3,573 promises for those who put their hope and their trust in Him, who make Jesus Christ Lord of their life. I have to believe He didn't miss anything. <laughs> I have to believe he's got them all covered. You can't bring something to him that will shock him or surprise him. So one way to develop hope. Number two, first prayer. Second, reading the word. We would spend um, the better part of several weeks just reading those promises if that's all we did. At 3,573. So, prayer and reading the word. When you want to develop, having been saved, giving your heart to Christ, developing that hope in Him will come through prayer. It will come through reading the Word, being in relationship with Christ. Paul wrote about it this way in Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory of that will be revealed to us. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Somebody ought to just give God praise right there. I don't. Whatever you've been through, according to what Paul is saying to us here, man, it's, it's only working for your good. Don't allow it to be a distraction. Don't allow it to be a downer, one that takes you out. Accept it that, okay, God, these circumstances are not what I planned, but I know you're going to work them for my good. They're momentary troubles, Paul says. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. There's your hope. That's where we place our hope. The more we focus on the blessings and the glory of the life to come, 
the less burdensome the situations that we're going through will matter. To me, what makes all of this even more amazing is Paul is writing in Romans and in Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 to 27. If you, have, if you think you have problems, go here and read this scripture and be encouraged. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Anybody got any problems? I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. And he called them momentary problems. Momentary troubles. Things that are passing. Vitali, if you can join me on the stage. Light, momentary troubles. And he wasn't exaggerating. We know when we read the scriptures that Paul's life was a life of testing one after the other, challenges, things happening in his life. As Christians, we have to be very, very careful because one of the one of the challenges that we all are caught up in is that we think much more about our current situations, the current problems that we have, but we think less or little of what God has in store for us when our hope is in Him. My challenge for myself, for each one of us, is that in this season, over these next four weeks, with our focus being on the story of the birth of Christ, is we read that story, but we need to acknowledge that that was God's way of sending a Savior to the world, of sending the one that when we commit our life to Him and follow Him, allowing the blood of Jesus to cover our lives and to become saved, made whole in Him, that then this relationship that we have with God the Father is the place that I'm looking for. It's the place that we as Christians should focus on. Heaven is my home. There's a lot of old songs about that. This world we're passing through. It's a journey, yes. It's a journey that sometimes will wind and take us up hills and down into valleys. But when our hope is in Him, we have confidence knowing for a God who sent His only Son into this world to give us life when we receive Him as our Savior has to care so much for us that when we are in a place where our hope is lacking, He provides for us the Word. He allows us to be in relationship the lyrics to this song that you guys sang earlier, all my life he's been faithful. I can't say that all my life I've been faithful to him. But I can certainly say all my life he's been faithful. And since making that commitment, growing up in church and knowing all the lingo, realizing that there is a place and there is a point, there is a time 
that, man, your commitment has to be greater than just hanging around Christianity, but it's becoming that. It's, be, it's becoming one that lets Christ live in you. Then our hope will be in Him. Our hope will be in His glory. What is the basis for your hope today? We have the right because Jesus both died and was resurrected. The rebirth brings a rebirth in our lives, creates a brand new us when we give our lives to Christ and brings us to that place where we can truly say, as First Peter 1, 3, and verse 4 says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope. Living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. That's the hope that we as Christians have. With your heads bowed, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you've allowed the, the things of life to cause you to lose hope, man, today, the first Sunday in December, 2019 come home to him today allow Christ to once again be the Lord of your life and if you're in this room and you do not know Jesus Christ and you've never made him the Lord of your life I would encourage you right now together we could say a very simple prayer that puts us in right position with Jesus Christ I want you to stand across this room because the greatest gift that can be given is the gift of eternal life. Christ has done it for us. Jesus the Christ has already done it for us. We just have to receive. So if you've never made him Lord of your life or if you've been out of relationship with him, you've allowed, as I said, these things to cause you to, to take your hope off of him out of heaven and, and back into this earthly realm. This morning together we can pray and just ask the Lord Jesus, first to be our Savior. If we don't know Him, to repent of our sins, to say, Father, forgive me of my sin. If you've been running from Him, I would ask you today to run to Him. Put your trust in Him. Put your faith in Him. And acknowledge that from this point forward, your hope will be in who He desires and has called you to be. Lord, I ask that in this room this morning, Holy Spirit, the work that only You will do, only You can do in each life. Father, I pray that humility and humbleness would fall on this place right now and that we, Your people, God, whether we be one who's never received You this morning to know that Jesus Christ will be our Savior and our Lord, I pray that they would receive you, that they would repent, that we would repent of our sins and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, making us new. And those, God of us, who have allowed distractions, we've lost hope. God, I pray this morning we will find hope in you once again. Precious Holy Spirit, have your way in this room. I just want to invite the prayer team, some of you that would like to join us here at the front. Maybe there's a situation going on in your life and you would love to have somebody just to pray the prayer of agreement with you. Maybe there's something you'd like to share with them to have them pray with you about. But I can tell you this morning that from this day forward, there's no reason to lose hope. He is our hope. I invite you, if you want special prayer for any situation, maybe there's uh, something going on in your life. It, maybe you have a need that you would just like to come and share uh, with these who are up front. They will gladly spend time with you and pray with you and encourage you. 
in the days ahead. Place your hope in Him. Over these next three weeks, each Sunday we will focus on a different aspect of what is Advent time of the year. But it's fitting that it begins with hope. Because without hope, we are lost. But with hope, in the hope of glory, we can know that God is working on our behalf. Next week, we'll talk about the love of Christ, the love that He has shown to us. Joy and peace will follow. What a beautiful picture that God has presented to each one of us through His Son, Jesus. Lord, I pray today, God, that both today and in the days ahead, in the busyness of what we classify or term as the Christmas season, Lord, that we will not lose focus of this season and purpose in this season, and that is that we have our hope in glory, but there are many around us who might not be in that position. So, Lord, I pray that because our hope is in you, that we will always be looking for the opportunity to share the hope of Jesus Christ to those around us. So, Lord, I pray blessings over these people. Lord, I pray that our hearts will turn towards you and that we will not allow distractions to keep us from accomplishing through you all that you desire. God, I'm asking, Father, for a move of your spirit in this house and in our lives as individuals, that our relationship with you becomes so strong and so powerful that we will move and shake this city for your glory and for your kingdom that will truly come and your will being done in each one of our lives. Lord, I thank you and I pray, God, that your hand of blessing is upon each and every individual as we place our hope in you. Bless their going out and bless their coming in. Father, for those who have continued to faithfully bring their tithe and offering into this storehouse, Lord, I pray, God, a, a special blessing in this time of year. God, let every seed that's sown bring back a great harvest, both prosperity and seed harvest for your kingdom. Lord, bless them financially. Bless them in the marketplace. Bless them and all that their hand touches as they have been faithful and obedient to your word. Lord, and I pray, God, that this season will be a season of joy and peace. God, I pray this morning as you hear, you will answer prayer that is being offered in this place. In Jesus' name, amen.